All right. The next question is, uh, the big book is 75 years old. That's correct, isn't it? Yeah. It took three years to write it? Yeah. How does this apply to me, a 23-year-old alcoholic in 2013? You know, I guess the, the, the first guiding thing on that is, is the language dated in it? I mean, it is a 75-year-old document. Is it? The illness is exactly the same. <laughs> it hasn't changed a lick. Yeah. No, so I, I think it's still there. The language might be a little antiquated, but the, uh, but I think the message is just as strong as it's ever been. I, <clears throat> I don't think I'd want to change it. It'd be like changing the Bible in a way. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. it, that's a bad example because they do change it. Every, they come up with a new translation yeah. every other year, it seems like. Yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, maybe what led into that was, you know, there's a, there's a lot of uh, knowledge maybe technology, a lot of things have changed in the last 75 years. Um, you know, but it, it, as far as I can see, and I'm, I try to be a pretty open-minded kind of guy to new ideas, new changes, but as far as I can see, um, you know, not only has the disease not changed, uh, the program of recovery still appears to work as good in 2013 as it did in, in 1935, 1940, when it was getting formulated and written. Um, so, uh, you know, although the language is, is, can be kind of interesting, uh, I think the solution mm -hmm. is still there, still pretty solid. Yeah. Yeah, I do too. I, do, I don't, I, I wouldn't want to make any major changes in anything in it, I don't think. But, um, you know, they've, um, I've re I read somewhere that you know they've they found evidence as far back as humans have been in existence. There's been evidence of of alcohol production. It's just mm -hmm. part of human culture. Um, and I guarantee you, if there was alcohol involved, there was people like me that oh, drank sure. it to excess. Yeah. So I mean, if you consider the entire history of humanity, um, however long you you know that that's been, mm -hmm. uh, you know, 75 years really isn't that long of a time. It's it's really just a drop mm -hmm. in the bucket that we've had a solution. It was bizarre. I mean, one of the treatments of alcoholism way back was <laughs> was put somebody on a rope and lowering them into a snake pit as long as they could stand it. How, how'd that go? Get them out, huh? How'd that go? Well, I never was one of them, but I, <laughs> I, would, I would imagine. You can't speak intelligently about that. that. <laughs> I would imagine they wouldn't want to go back down there again, they, uh, but I, I seriously doubt it would do. Yeah, it probably won't make make me want to drink if I, when I got out of there. <laughs> well, the truth of the matter is, most of us have been lowered into that snake pit. Oh yeah, one way or another. <laughs> yeah, one way. Well, they so, literally did it. it <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, in fact, being lowered into, uh, you know, um, you know, to actually being lowered into a snake pit would and, probably be a walk in the park yeah. compared to some of the snake pits yeah. that we came yeah. from. And we built them, in a lot of cases, we built them. That's right. Yeah. And I guess, you know, we. the next question is kind of, you know, ties along right into that, you know, why does it still relate so well to the suffering alcoholic? And I think, you know, for me, um, it's just an example of, a, you know, a higher power's hand in this. I mean, we talked about earlier, you know, that mm -hmm. the motley crew that wrote this book, I mean, it was a... <laughs> Uh, what was that? Wildest kangaroos? Was that what it was? <laughs> and uh, you know, I think that for me, it, it just really, you know, there had to be a, a guiding force as part yeah. of that to have oh, yeah. all those different people working together yeah. and, and to come out with something that's still yeah. so effective at, at dealing with this disease. Oh yeah, it really is remarkable. Yeah, I knew some of those folks that wrote that book, and they were they were they were a motley crew. I mean, they were they were some geniuses on there too, but they uh, they uh, <laughs> well, there's some geniuses at this table too. Yeah, but. yeah. yeah, there you go. Yeah. And, and and it's probably safe to say that if it weren't for the non-alcoholics, maybe yeah. in the background oh, and yeah. guiding oh, yeah. the motley crew, mm -hmm. then and maybe now to some some extent, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, nothing may have ever gotten oh, done. God, yeah. Well, well, Rockefeller introduced us how to handle money. Yeah. Yeah, they, 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 he, he, he helped us understand that uh, you don't buy this, you know. They, it's a, that was a huge, huge uh, contribution that guy made by not making a big contribution. Exactly. Yeah. Ironic. Mm -hmm. 
How have uh, the first 164 pages of the big book changed, if at all, over the years, as far as you are aware? Darn little. Darn little that, that, that I can tell, that I can tell, that uh, we've, we've got a hundred lookalikes, a thousand lookalikes going around, but you know, the, the basic text, the way it's, it, 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 as far as I can tell, it hadn't changed much at all. You know, the, the original basic text is still pretty much the same. I think the interesting thing that I found, and I don't know if it was beyond the first or second edition, but I, well, I know the first edition, um, the, the first printings, may have been all the printings of the first edition, uh, Dr. Silkworth left his name out because he wasn't sure about that Motley crew. <laughs> and um, once, uh, you know, we became recognized or, you know, I don't know at what point, um, was it the, maybe the American Medical Association, you know, declared alcoholism as a disease? Uh, not, and I probably should be a little more brushed up on history, but at some point I know that changed yeah. because, and then he's like, "Yeah, I'll sign my name to it because mm -hmm. this is a, a mm -hmm. this is a, a real solution to a real, real problem." Yeah, they, yeah, they didn't declare it as much. They alluded to it as an illness. The uh, they didn't make a deck or you know like like it's carved in stone type of thing. That is, that's, that's sort of a mystique about it that you know people have seen that as a declaration, but it really was that they were guarded in 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 in, in that in not coming out bold with a bold statement, but it was enough, you know, to 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 start opening doors so that I probably started getting treated for the problem, and so it was it was you you really valuable for us. But the, the the idea of declared was never really in the picture that <clears throat> they were our friends, though. So that's for a dog on sure. Yeah. And um, yeah. I've noticed, you know, I, when I was in uh, treatment light as a IOP over at the hospital, uh, you know, they they told us on a regular basis that you know. They did ask us what we thought the most prolific drug in the world was. You know, what what was the world's drug problem? What was America's drug problem? And you know, we'd all go around and say whatever, and they'd be they'd always say, no, it's not. It's it's alcohol. You know, and they'd give us the statistics of it, and it's you know, alcohol is the most abused drug in the world, is what they tell us. And I think it's interesting that you know, I think it's easy as a non-alcoholic because before you know before I started drinking I blamed an alcoholic you know now it was an alcoholic's fault you know mm -hmm. they could stop drinking anytime they wanted and then I drank and I was like wait a second I, maybe they were on to something here but it is a different you know? yeah <laughs> but it's uh I think yeah. that that you know talking about the medical association declaring yeah. it as a disease or insinuating it's a disease I think that changed mm -hmm. a lot mm -hmm. a lot of people's perceptions sure did. oh did it ever I think it's what opened doors to treatment yeah yeah and you know, kind of going off that question, the original question of the, you know, how's the first hundred sixty-four pages changed? How has a literature kind of as a whole, how has it changed, if any? Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously it has, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. well, I, I think it's changed a great deal, and, and not necessarily for the better. You know, mm -hmm. for changed for the worse in, in a lot of ways. The uh, yeah. I don't. I don't think we ever had a really good marriage with treatment, you know, in terms of of working together in a complementary kind of way. I think there's always a little bit of antagonism that uh, when treatment first emerged, we criticized it, you know, and instead of cooperating, we we criticized and condemned it, you know, and, and you know you hear all kind of stuff like these people are getting paid for what we do for nothing, you know, and this kind of thing. So there was a real attitude about it, and I think it was harmful. The, the the product of that was harmful, and we started seeing those little little groups springing springing up around the country. They weren't really groups; they were just meetings, you know. And and that became just dominant in the society. You know that uh, those things just sprung up all over the place. And uh, I know I was deeply grateful to see treatment, even though I'd never been in it. But I was grateful to see it. Because I guarantee you, I've held some alcoholics in in, uh, in some horrible situations, and it had nothing to do with them. You know, my mother treated more alcoholics than uh, there was nobody else. I'd take them home. I, my mother has treated alcoholics, and so we, there, there were there, there were some desperate times in there when we were just sort of clamoring, and uh, 
but but that, some of that 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 sort of it, it wasn't a war, but it was just sort of a d divisiveness with treatment and AA rather than coming together. And I think it's one place where we failed to do CPC and PI work, you know, where we, we, we really established relationships. We didn't do a good job of that. And so I, I think it affected a lot of, 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 a lot of stuff with us. The, um, I, I'll tell you one thing that, uh, is that uh, I, I think has been definitive in, in our program. You don't hear a lot about it, but uh, in in '55, when uh, when uh, in, in St. Louis, when the, the International Convention, it was a was a monumentally important place in our history because Bill, you know, Bob was dead, and Bill was old, you know, and he knew that his time was limited. And, and he was open about it, and he said, you know, that, that, that we, we've got to make changes. And Bill, primarily Bill and the trustees had put together the concepts and uh, you know, for, the, for the general service, uh, for, the, uh, for the program to operate through the, 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 let me get it right, that his whole idea was that the home group would be the driving force in Alcoholics Anonymous, and that it would be it would be delivered by having the group representative carry the conscience of the group to the assembly, to the, uh, the, the conference. The general service conference was set up as a part as a bar, part of that, and uh, it, it was a good plan. The problem was that we never implemented it. Yeah, effectively, never, never implemented, and, uh, and still to this day, I mean, there's nothing new, nothing, nothing about this is all resolved now. I did, <clears throat> I did a little thing. Uh, I've, I've been concerned about it, you know, for for a while, you know, that that would just seem like we were just at odds with stuff. It looked like what we were doing at the state level, the area level, and what we we're doing at the level of, were like ships in the night. There, there was no real communication, no effective communication that, and uh, so that was troubling to me. In fact, you and I, whether you knew it or not, I was on a mission when we we, we did a area service thing. There was, there was, Steve did a, you, you were the GSR, right? Or DCM? DCM. DCM. Yeah, and I was a, a, the area chair for corrections. Well, I had a double mission. I didn't announce it or anything, but I had a double mission. One was uh, I wanted to do what they asked me to do, and that was to, uh, to coordinate the, the correction stuff. And we had a great, great uh, experience with that. The other thing that I wanted to do, I felt like uh, just what I was just talking about, that there was a, uh, almost a complete disconnect between area and group, that um, there was little to no communication. Yeah. And so I did. A, I never said anything. To, I, I asked I ask you a question at the end of it, if you, if you recall. This is actually. We'll, I mean, we were going to come back to the twelve concepts and the and the three legacies here later. If you wanted to save that for then for that question, if you wanted to do that hmm. before you get too warmed up here. What are the one we on now? What was that question? Literature. There. Literature. Yeah, yeah, we may want to do that then. That, yeah, because. <laughs> Yeah, that that is a little bit a little bit heavier heavier lifting to 